In this lecture, we introduce the source superposition method for determining unknown voltages and currents in electric circuits. After studying the node voltage and mesh current methods, we should now be familiar with the idea that the voltages and currents in an electric circuit can be determined as the solution to a system of linear equations. Now, the values for the resistors and, de and dependent sources determine the coefficients of the equations. That is, they determine the components of the matrix A as I've written it here. The unknown voltages and currents, well, they serve as the unknown variables, or as we've written it here, they serve as the x. And the values of the independent voltage and current sources, well, they determine the known part of the equation, what we've called y. One property of linear equations like this is that if the known part of the equation is decomposed into two or more parts, then the solution to the equation could be obtained as the sum of the solutions that are due to each of the decomposed components. Well, this general principle might sound complicated, but it can be easily understood by looking at a simple example. Well, let's look at a 2 by 2 system of two equations and two unknowns. The coefficients are 5, 3, 2, 1. The two unknown variables are v1 and v2 and the known quantities are 2 and 4. Now what I'd like to do is decompose the known quantities into one component that has the value of 2 and 0. So I'll rewrite the equation and I want to solve for v1 and v2 if the known driving function is 2 and 0. Well if I solve this system of equations what I'll find is that v1 is equal to negative 2 and v2 is equal to 4. Next I want to rewrite the system of equations, but this time I'll write the known equation as 0, 4, which is the other part of this decomposition. In this case, I solve for v1 and v2, and I get values of 12 and negative 20. Now, because 2, 0 and 0, 4 are a decomposition of 2, 4, I can write the solution as the sum of the two decomposed solutions. That is, negative 2, 4 plus 12, negative 20. And in that case, when I add those up, I'll get 10 and negative 16. So what I've done is I've decomposed the input, which has the values 2 and 4, into two components. One of those has values 2, 0, and the other had the values 0, 0 4. In essence, in the first case, I set the second known input value which was 4 to 0, and in the second case I set the first known input value, which was 2 to 0. And then I solved for each of those, solved for v1 and v2 in each of those situations, and because the decomposition could be added together and form the original driving vector 2, 4, then I could add these two solutions together and get the overall solution. Let's take a look at an electric circuit that has a 3 volt voltage source, a 2 amp current source, and 4 resistors. And What we'd like to find is the voltage across this 2 ohm resistor. Now there's a variety of methods we might apply to solve for this voltage. One, we could label the nodes and write node voltage equations solve for the node voltages. Of course, one of those would be VO, and we'd be finished with the circuit. Another thing we could do is write loop equations and solve for the currents in this circuit. And once we solve for the current through this mesh, we could use that current to determine this voltage. Both of those methods would work, of course, and I encourage you to try both of them on this circuit and see that you get the same answer. Another thing we could do is use the principle of superposition. And with the principle of superposition, we'll solve for the output voltage for two different circuits. One of those circuits would be the circuit that we would obtain if we set the 3 volt voltage source to zero. So if the voltage provided by this source is zero, that implies that the voltage drop across this source is zero, of course. And the way to obtain that is to replace the voltage source with a short. 
So if we want to replace any voltage source with a, with a zero volt voltage source, we replace that voltage source with a short, as I've shown here. We could also replace this current source with a zero amp current source. Now a zero amp current source would imply that no current flows in this line. So we don't want to replace that with a short this time because that would put quite a bit of current through that wire. Instead we want to replace it with an open. So anytime we want to change a, the value of a current source to zero we can replace that with an open. So to use the method of superposition the first step we'll set the voltage source equal to zero and we'll solve for VO. After we've done that we'll put the voltage source back in the circuit and we'll set the current source equal to zero and we'll solve for VO and because this circuit is the superposition of both of those sources we can take the output voltage that we solve in each situation and add them and that will be the voltage the output voltage when both sources are present. Well let's start by setting the 3 volt voltage source to zero and to do that we'll replace it with a short and then what we'd like to do is solve for this voltage. Well the way I'll do that is by first identifying the current through that resistor. I'll call that I and then what I will observe is that if I look at these two resistors they're now in parallel because the voltage source has been replaced with a short so that's 6 ohms in parallel with 3 ohms that's 18 divided by 9 or that's 2 ohms so on this side of the resistor I have 4 ohms in series with 2 so I have 6 ohms of resistance here and this path sees 2 ohms of resistance so that current through the resistor is the two amps that's splitting and then the opposite path's resistance is 4 plus 2 or 6 and the total resistance of the two paths is 6 plus 2 or 8. So that means that this current will be 12 eighths or three halves of an amp and that means that that voltage VO will be three halves of an amp times two ohms or three volts. So when we set this three volt source to zero the output voltage VO is equal to 3 volts. Okay, so let's look at the other situation. So we'll put the 3 volt voltage source back into the circuit and now we'll take the 2 amp current source out by replacing it with an open circuit. So in, in this case when I look at this circuit I might label this node voltage V1 I might label this node my ground so this node is relative to ground this is V O. Now between V1 and ground to this side I have 6 ohms in parallel with 6 ohms so this looks like an equivalent of 3 ohms so I have 3 ohms in series with 3 ohms so that's going to drop half the voltage across each one so in that case if we have 3 volts to begin with then V1 is going to be half of 3 or 3 halves of a volt. Now that I know V1 I know that V0 or VO can be obtained by a voltage division. So VO well that's V1 so that's 3 halves of a volt times this resistance 2 divided by the total resistance 6 so that's 2 6 or that's 1 third so that tells me that I will get a half of a volt for this circuit. 
So when we have just a 3 volt voltage source, the current source is set to 0, the output voltage in that case, VO, is equal to 1 half of a volt. So where the 2 amp source is set to 0, then the output voltage is a half of a volt. So now we can look at the situation when we have both sources in the circuit, the total voltage is the voltage that we obtain when the 3 volt source is set to 0 and we only have the 2 amp source, which is 3, plus the voltage that we obtain when the 2 amp source is set to 0 and we only have the 3 volt source. So in that case, it's 3.5 volts. And that's example of how we use superposition to solve for an unknown voltage in a circuit that contains two or more independent sources.